idea of, of flying a, uh, an airplane that's going 400, 500 miles an hour requires that you be able to think very quickly and make good decisions uh, and, and be very decisive while you make these good decisions. You don't have time to uh, think about it, have a donut or a cup of coffee or whatever. You've got to make decisions because the airplane is not going to slow down and you're responsible for keeping up with it and making sure that uh, you accomplish the missions. I graduated from the academy as a second lieutenant, which is, which is customary in 1964, and for the next uh, 14 months was in Air Force uh, flying training, learning to fly jets. There's, you, you can't duplicate the adrenaline or the, uh, the readiness with, with anything that, that we normally encounter in our real life when you're fighting for your life. When the men in the air around you are fighting for their lives, uh, it brings a certain urgency, it brings a certain uh, gravitas, if that's the correct word to use, where one mistake, one miscommunication, one misjudgment can kill all the others around you and, of course, kill, you kill yourself. Uh, so there's nothing quite sobering and focusing as being in combat where you just can't make a mistake. If you make a mistake, you're usually going to die. It was in India. It was, a, it was a, the highest honor of my life, of course, uh, being a multiple MiG killer. There are very few of them from the Southeast Asia War. And so you, you, you join a, a very illustrious club of highly, highly decorated and highly respected fighter pilots. So uh, I was, you know, of course, doing what I was trained to do to serve the country, doing my job as a fighter pilot, but uh, to be involved in, in two air-to-air -air dogfight MiG kills was quite an honor, and it still is to this day. It's very intense. Um, they, don't, they don't last you know, more than probably five or six or seven minutes, but they're all happening at, at speeds of 1,000 mi uh, miles an hour, so closure rates, very, very high Gs, four to five to six Gs, uh, three-dimensional fighting, uh, up, up, upside down, diving at the earth, hard turning, accelerating, uh, every possible... Uh, attitude that you can imagine in an airplane while you are trying to outmaneuver your adversary so you can gain the advantage and get the, the, the shot that'll, that'll uh, win the fight for you. So uh, it happens so quickly you, you have to sit back after the fight's over and really try and reconstruct what was happening because when, when you're fighting at 25,000 feet and pulling all the G's and maneuvering uh, it, it means, in such uh, airspace, uh, the, the heights involved and the, and the, uh, the turn radiuses that are involved, are, it it's boggles the mind when you think about it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's probably, it's almost hard to describe to somebody, uh, uh, a non-pilot, a non-combat pilot, uh, what, uh, what a dogfight is really like when it's for, for real, when it's not practice, but when somebody is actually going to be trying to uh, shoot down your adversary.